Hello students, my name is Dr. Sangram Patil. I am connected with Sammek English School in Arundel, District Jalgaon of Maharashtra State. And this is your Science and Technology of Standard 9, Chapter 5, Acids, Bases and Salts. The learning goals of this chapter are to learn about Arrhenius theory of acids and bases, concentration of acid or a base, pH of a solution, pH of an acid and a base, and to learn about salts. There is a question in your book, how are the following substances classified into three groups with the help of litmus? They are acid, alkali, and neutral. So acid examples are lemon, tomato, tamarind, orange, vinegar, and buttermilk. Alkalis are alum, baking soda, milk of lime, milk of magnesia, and water is neutral. Now, there are three types of ionic compounds, and these are acids, bases, and salts. Acids are sour to test. They have hydrogen H plus as the basic radical in their molecules. Alkali are bitter test and they are slippery or soapy in touch. They have hydroxyl OH minus as the acidic radical in their molecule. Salts, these are the ionic compounds which have a basic radical other than H plus and an acidic radical other than OH minus. These are called salts. Litmus is used to identify acids and bases. Now let us learn about ionic compounds. The molecule of an ionic compound has two constituents, namely cations. These are positive ions, also known as basic radicals. And the second constituent is anion, which are negative ion, also known as acidic radicals. There is a force of attraction between these ions as they are oppositely charged. One is positive, the other is negative. And there is this attraction between positive and negative ions is called as ionic bond. The force of attraction between one positive charge of a cation and one negative charge of an anion makes one ionic bond. So ionic bond is made up of a positive charge of a cation and negative charge of anion attracting towards each other. Look at the diagram. The sodium and the chloride they have ionic bond between them. The sodium is a positive ion that is cation. Chloride has a negative charge that is acidic radical anion. And the bond between these two is ionic bond and it forms sodium chloride that is salt. There is a natural tendency of any body to change from an electrically charged state into an electrically neutral state. Why then is an electrically charged ion formed from an electrically balanced that is neutral atom? The explanation of this question lies in the electronic configuration of atoms. Let us see again how the sodium and chloride atoms form sodium and chloride ions and as a result 
how sodium chloride salt is formed sodium chloride salt is formed in the following way the outermost shell of the sodium and the chloride atoms is not complete octet however outermost shell in both sodium and chloride ions is a complete octet an electronic configuration with a complete octet indicates a stable state an ionic bond is formed between the oppositely charged sodium and chloride ions and therefore an ionic compound sodium chloride having a very high stability is formed now look at the diagram there is a sodium ion and chloride ion look at their electronic shells sodium has 2 8 and 1 so one electron in the outermost shell similarly chloride has got and chloride atom has got 2 8 7 electrons so 7 electrons in the outer shell sodium ion has got 2 and 8 electrons whereas chloride ion has got 2 8 and 8 electrons when they combine together to form a sodium chloride and there is an ionic bond between sodium ion and chloride ion which is a very stable bond giving rise to sodium chloride that is salt now here is a list of few chemical compounds they have given a table with molecular formulae for these compounds and they want you to know the names of these compounds the basic radical that is the positive ion <coughs> cation an acidic radical that is negative ion anion and the type of compound whether it's acid base or salt so take this as a homework and find out what these compounds are i'll just name these compounds the first one is hydrochloric acid the second one is nitric oxide hydrogen bromide sulfuric acid dihydrogen borate that is boric acid sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide calcium hydroxide ammonium hydroxide sodium chloride calcium nitrate potassium sulfate calcium chloride and ammonium sulfate let's move on to the next topic that is dissociation of ionic compounds on mixing the substances as shown in these diagrams what are the resulting mixtures formed by mixing the following substances water and salt it's called saline which is nacl if we mix water and sugar then it gives rise to sugar syrup it is solution it is homogeneous solution if you mix water and sand it doesn't produce any chemical reaction it is just called mixture if you mix water with saw dust which is the wood dust sawdust these are small particles of wood the sawdust may absorb water because wood absorbs water but it will not dissolve the wood therefore sawdust is insoluble in water so we've seen the four types of reactions here water salt producing saline water sugar producing solution water sand there's no reaction 
so formation of mixture and water and sawdust they do not mix with each other the sawdust just swells up on dissolving in water an ionic compound forms an aqueous solution in the solid state the oppositely charged ions in the ionic compound are sitting side by side when an ionic compound begins to dissolve in water the water molecules push themselves in between the ions of the compound and they separate them from each other that is an ionic compound dissociates while forming an aqueous solution each of the dissociated ions in aqueous solution is surrounded by water molecules this state is indicated by writing a q meaning aqueous on the right of the symbol of ion so aq is the aqueous solution in which the ion is suspended so if you look at this diagram the solid sodium chloride is put powered into the water the water molecules they dissociate the sodium and chloride ions so there is a ionic compound dissociation and it gives rise to aqueous solution of sodium chloride on the right side in the right diagram so aqueous solution look at the chemical reaction sodium chloride when mixes with water it dissociates giving rise to sodium ions aqueous plus chloride ions aqueous that is dissociation now let us look into arrhenius theory of acids and bases arrhenius was swedish scientist he proposed a theory of acids and bases in 1887 this theory gives definitions of acids and bases now let's look at the definition of acid an acid is a substance which on dissolving in water gives rise to hydrogen ion as the only cation for example hcl hydrochloric acid h2so4 sulfuric acid and h2co3 carbonic acid so if you put these three acids in water and they dissociate giving rise to h plus aqueous all three of them that is neg positive ion and then they produce negative ions they are aqueous so hcl produces hydrogen and chloride sulfuric acid produces hydrogen and hso4 that is sulfurous acid hso4 again reacts with water and releases h plus and so4 ions now let's move on what are the names of following compounds nh3 that is ammonia na2o sodium oxide and cao calcium oxide when the above compounds are mixed with water they combine with water complete the following table by writing the ions formed by their combination with water into which type will you classify the above compounds acid base or salt now these three all three are bases these are basic compounds now you can easily complete the table the first one has been solved already 
you can see that ammonia plus water gives rise to NH4 plus and OH minus. Sodium oxide plus water will give two sodium ions and two OH minus ions. Similarly, calcium oxide with water will give rise to two calcium, uh, calcium ion and two OH minus ions. Let's look at classification of acids and bases. The first way of classifying is strong and weak acids, bases and alkali. 1. Acids and bases are classified into strong and weak types on the basis of the extent to which they dissociate in their aqueous solutions. So strong acid when dissolved in water a strong acid dissociates almost completely and resulting aqueous solution contains mainly hydrogen ions and the concern acidic radical for example hydrochloric acid hydrobromic acid hno3 h2so4 so nitric oxide and sulfuric acid now strong acid will dissolve dissociates completely and results in hydrogen ion production weak acid on dissolving in water a does not dissociate completely and resulting aqueous solution contains hydrogen ion and concern acidic radical in small proportion along with large proportion of undissociated molecule of acid so it doesn't dissociate completely the part which dissociates that gives rise to hydrogen ion and concerned acidic radical but it is only part the rest remaining part is undissociated it remains as it is example is carbonic acid and acetic acid which is CH3COOH. These are weak acids. They don't dissolve in water completely. Strong acids dissolve in water completely. Strong base. On dissolving in water, strong base dissociates almost completely. And it results in aqueous solution which contains mainly hydroxyl ions, that is OH minus ions, and concern basic radicals example sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide calcium hydroxide and sodium oxide so strong base dissolves completely and produces mainly oh minus plus concerned basic radical weak base on dissolving in water does not dissociate completely and the resulting aqueous solution contains small amount of small proportion of hydroxyl ions and concerned basic radical along with large proportion of undissociated molecule of the original base example NH4OH that is ammonium hydroxide that's weak base does not dissociate completely alkali is also known as alkali the bases which are highly soluble in water are called alkali for example sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide ammonia here sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide are strong alkalis ammonia is a weak alkali so alkali definition is the bases which are highly soluble in water are called alkali alkali are basically base the second method of classification of acids and bases is basicity and acidity now look at this table look at the chemical formula of acids at the top and find out number of hydrogens obtained from one molecule HCl how many hydrogens will be obtained obviously one HNO3 one hydrogen H2SO4 two hydrogen ions H2CO3 two hydrogen ions 
H3BO3. These are three hydrogen ions. H3PO4, three hydrogen. CH3COOH. There will be more hydrogen ions. But acetic acid only produces one H plus. Bases, number of hydroxyl ions obtained from one molecule of this basis. Now look at the chemical formulas at the bottom. Sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, and all these uh, chemical formulas count hydroxyl ions. One in sodium hydroxide, KOH, one OH, CaOH2, there are two OH, BaOH2, there are two OH, aluminum hydroxide, there are three OH, ferric or iron hydroxide. There are three OH and NH4OH, that is one OH. So acids and bases are classified on their basis. More H plus produced, they are more acidic. More OH minus produced, they are more basic. So classification on basicity and acidity. Acids and bases are also classified according to their basicity and acidity respectively, as we have seen. Basicity of acids, the number of H plus ions obtainable by the dissociation of one molecule of an acid is called its basicity. Acidity of the bases, the number of hydroxyl ions obtainable by dissociation of one molecule of a base is called its acidity. So basicity of acid and acidity of bases. It's the number of H plus ion or hydroxyl ion obtainable after dissociation of one molecule into water. Remember this carefully. Now let us look into this in more detail. On the basis of this table, give examples of monobasic, diabasic and tribasic acids. Mono is one, di is two and tri is three. So look at the table again. It is the same table with same acids at the top and same bases at the bottom. Basicity and acidity. So monobasic acid. That means it gives one hydrogen ion when it is dissociated. Dibasic is two hydrogen ions and tribasic. That means they give three hydrogen ions. So it's very simple. You can make out which of these give one hydrogen, two hydrogens and three hydrogens. Remember the acetic acid CH3COOH only hydrogen attached to oxygen dissociates. So it gives one hydrogen. It can be confused easily because CH3COOH contains four hydrogen molecules but only one dissociates. Similarly, there are three types of bases monoacidic diacidic and triacidic so this is again the same chart with bases at the bottom see how many oh minus ions these bases will produce if you count naoh will produce one koh will produce one calcium hydroxide will produce two oh minus Barium hydroxide will produce 2, AlOH3 will produce 3, iron hydroxide will produce 3, and NH4OH will produce 1 hydroxyl ion. Let us look into concentration of acids and bases. If you cut a lemon into two equal parts and take the juice of each part into two separate beakers, Beakers are small glass containers. Now add 10 ml drinking water in one beaker and 20 ml in the second. Stir the solutions in both beakers to mix them and now test them. Is there any difference in test of these two solutions? What is the difference? You know it. In the above activity, the sour test of solutions is because of the solute that is lemon juice the quantity of lemon juice is same 
but they taste different. The solution in the first beaker is more sour than the second. And why so? Because it has got less water than the second beaker. So the concentration of the solute, that is lemon juice, is more in the first beaker. Although the quantity of solute is same, the quantity of solvent is different and the ratio of quantity of solute to the quantity of resulting solution is different. This ratio is large in first beaker. Therefore, it tastes more sour. On the other hand, the proportion of lemon juice in the total solution in second beaker is smaller. So, it tastes less sour. The test of food stuff depends upon the nature of the test giving ingredients. Ingredients means what it contains and its proportion in the food stuff. So the test will depend on the nature of the ingredient and their proportion into the food. Similarly, all the properties of a solution depend on the nature of solute and solvent. Solvent is water in this case and also on the proportion of solute in the solution. The proportion of solute in the solution is called concentration of solute in the solution. So here the proportion of the juice is called concentration of the juice in the solution. When the concentration of solute is in its solution is high, it is concentrated solution. Whereas the solution is called dilute solution when the concentration of the solute is low. Now, several units are used to express the concentration of the solution. Two of these units are used more commonly. The first unit is mass of solute in grams dissolved in one liter of solution, that is gram per liter of solution. The second unit is the number of moles of the solute dissolved in one liter of the solution. So it is moles per liter and it is called mol molarity, capital M of the solution. So grams per liter and moles per liter, that is capital M. The molarity of solute is indicated by writing its molecular formula inside a square bracket. Now look at this NaCl in square bracket is equal to 1 means the molarity of the solution of common salt is 1 m that is 1 molar 1 mole, mole per liter now students will learn more details of this technique of measurement of concentration in next part this is the end of part 1 of this chapter the next part is available on youtube channel so go and access it there 